The sun is setting on the land of enchantment, and in stark contrast to the quiet of the New Mexico evening, awaits an arena bursting with energy. term underdog yeah we were an underdog to that team that we played against Houston I mean but you know we were in the ACC so I don't know and during that tournament nobody expected us to do what we did so I guess you can call us the underdogs every time an underdog beats the odds and overcomes a bigger opponent Jim Valvano's cardiac pack is mentioned he always had a focus and had a dream of winning a national championship. He was just putting all the pieces together. Every time a Cinderella team tries on the slipper, the names Lowe, Wittenberg, and Bailey land softly on the tips of tongues everywhere. I remember Valvano saying this, before you leave here, are you going to put up a banner? And we, we, we believed in that. Every time someone dares to dream big, they hope to match what the Wolfpack did during that unforgettable three-month stretch during the winter and early spring of 1983. That team captured the spirit, humor, and imagination of the mercurial Belvano, who promised the team on his first day on the job three years earlier that he would one day win a national title. He just wanted to know who wanted to go along on the ride with him. Each time we won a game throughout the NCAA tournament, it was jubilation and, okay, we've got a goal. We, we know exactly what we need to do. After three years of incremental success, Belvano expected his 1982-83 team to be good. It was ranked as high as number 15 in the nation early in the season. That's when tragedy struck. Uh, we were having a great season and um, then I hurt my foot uh, kind of two-thirds of the way during the season. Though Wittenberg was thought to be lost for the season, Belvano told his team it was too soon to quit. Freshman Ernie Myers stepped into the lineup. Sophomores Charles, Cozell McQueen, and Terry Gannon grew into their complementary roles, and junior Alvin Battle became a bigger contributor. Remarkably, Wittenberg returned to the lineup after just five weeks. He found himself on a different team. Wittenberg led the Wolfpack to an overtime win over Michael Jordan and the Tar Heels in the semifinals of the ACC tournament in Atlanta. And Sidney Lowe pushed the team to the championship by beating Virginia and legendary center Ralph Sampson. From there, it was a cross-country whirlwind of unlikely wins, incredible finishes, and improbable comebacks that captured the attention of the entire nation. To far-flung Corvallis, Oregon, where Belvano predicted if his team beat Pepperdine in the first round, it might just win the national championship. You know, that first game, it was just a nail bite. I mean, it was, it was like 2 in the morning, and, you know, they, they sent us to the West Coast, and it was just unbelievable. Man. We pulled that game out, and, and just going through the whole tournament, man, every game was like a, a nail biter. You know, that's what coined the phrase, uh, the, you know, cardiac pat. It was followed by Thurl Bailey's tip-ins of two missed shots to beat Nevada Las Vegas. In Ogden, Utah, the pack raced back in the second half to beat Utah, then ended Samson's career thanks to a pair of end-of-game free throws by Charles. The semifinal win over Georgia put the Wolfpack in the championship for the second time in school history. But no one gave Velvano or his team a chance. Well, Jimmy V from day one believed in us. He thought from day one that this team had a chance to win it all. In nine postseason games, the Wolfpack was down by double digits at some point in the second half. They won each of those games. The underdog Wolfpack cut down the game's biggest giants, Jordan, Sampson, and Hakeem Olajuwon, en route to cutting down the Nets. And no team in college basketball history has ever beaten so many teams that had been ranked number one at some point during the season. 
That is the legacy of the 1983 Cardiac Cat. A team that always found a way to survive and advance all the way to the national championship. When you have a goal, when you have a dream, and when you have a belief, and you throw in that concept of never stop believing and loving in each other, and you can accomplish miracles. And that's what the 83 team taught. I'm humbled by this opportunity and grateful that uh, NC State recognized this team because it's a special group of guys uh, that uh, stuck together and still remain together even 35 years later. We thank NC State for allowing us to be a part of a group of people that have come through NC State. A lot of great players from basketball, football, all athletics. But to choose this team, it's amazing. It's something that no one can ever take away from us. It's a big deal to be recognized as one of the big things that happened here at the university. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a huge honor and, you know, to be blessed with this type of uh, acknowledgement um, that you did something great and special. As long as this university is here, you know, this 83 team is going to be remembered as something special. Seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg, oh, it's a long way. Oh!